Good evening, um, my name is Christopher Schlees. I'm an attorney in downtown Pleasanton. Uh, I spent eight years on the board of directors of the Tri-Valley Conservancy um, and have been a member of the Sierra Club for 36 odd years. Um, I was asked by the group sponsoring to speak uh, as their service moderator tonight, and I'm honored to do so. Um, tonight, for Livermore, we have but two candidates, and they're both running for mayor. Um, so we're going to change the rules up a little bit here and allow you folks a little bit more time on each question, if that's all right. Um, and so we're going to try to go with 90 seconds on, on each matter. And if, if uh, that's too much, uh, we'll, we'll uh, just move to the next question. Um, in the meantime, we have the sponsor from Livermore, um, David Rounds from the Friends of Livermore. And I'd like to introduce David and ask him to speak. Thank you. Thank you, David. I'm David Rounds from the Friends of Livermore. Thank you, everybody, for putting this on. It was, I know how much work one of these things are. So the Friends of Livermore is a community-based group that formed under a simple but powerful vision for Livermore to protect the urban growth boundary, prevent sprawl, and preserve open space. Over many years, FOL has worked to establish and protect the urban growth boundary and has been active in council and countywide elections to support candidates and initiatives that reflect these values. In more recent times, FOL has supported the revitalization of downtown and the emergence of the culturally rich inner core. We have worked with the county to protect open space through Measure D, fought efforts aimed to create exceptions to Measure D, and there are many new issues we are we all will face, including solar farm proposals and microbreweries in the rural parts of Livermore and the uh, county. And near and dear to us in Livermore is to keep vigilant around challenges to the South Livermore Valley Agricultural Plan. All of these efforts around protecting this open space have been, has also forced us to focus on revitalizing downtown. The trade-off for stopping sprawl from consuming open space is to grow in the city limits. How to grow, how that growth occurs, and the ability of Livermore to balance this growth while preserving the quality of life for our citizens has become the focus of this year's election. Thank you to the candidates who are here tonight, and I know we all look forward to your answers. Thank you, Mr. Rams. Um, and I should mention that the council candidates were all invited to participate, and for one reason or another, none of them are here tonight. So um, you two have the floor. Uh, we'll start with um, each of you giving a 90-second introduction of yourself, um, and then we'll, we'll move ahead to the specific questions. So, uh, candidate Lane, would you open up, please? Yes, thank you. I'm Joshua Lane, running for Livermore Mayor, candidate right now. I'm running for mayor because I carry the voices uh, for the families that are struggling to make ends meet teachers who are underpaid, businesses that are about to go out of business, and those living in bushes and streets. The last three weeks I've been going door to door to businesses and homes, not just to get votes, but to hear the real issues straight from the horse's mouth. So to say that I'm uninformed is absolutely incorrect. <clears throat> I bring four years of federal government experience to the table, along with six years of legal experience and in our courts and 11 years of successful business experience to the table for my fellow Livermoreans. It's given I'm not a polished politician. I am a United States Marine. I don't have an overpaid city attorney and city manager paying me and coaching me uh, to have the slick tongue. I bring Long overdue, young blood to my wonderful city with innovative resolutions to bring millions of dollars while reducing taxes for our families. I am for a better quality of living. For my fellow Livermoreans, please outside, I have pamphlets and bumper stickers and more information, not just about myself, but my resolutions on how to solve issues uh, in Livermore and the issues that I believe are real. So out with the old and in with the new. 
Thank you. Candidate Marchand, please. Oh, very simple, that one, Mark. Uh, so, in last year's citizen survey, 95% of our residents agreed that Livermore is a great place to live, work, raise a family. That can only happen with strong leadership and smart planning. I'm asking for your vote this year so that we can continue working together to keep Livermore a place that we, we will be proud for our children and grandchildren to inherit. I'm a Bay Area native. In 1985, my wife and I moved to Livermore to raise our family. This year, my wife and I celebrated our 40th wedding anniversary. I understand how important commitment is, whether in relationships or in government. Commitment takes time and effort. Throughout my years of service in elected office, I have demonstrated that I consistently provide the time and the effort needed to effectively serve my community. Part of that commitment is to represent Livermore's best interests on 29 regional committees, boards, and commissions. That commitment is getting things done. Through my participation on these commissions, I have successfully brought back millions of dollars to Livermore to support public safety and our transportation infrastructure. Good governance requires effective leadership, regional partnerships, and collaboration. I am proud to be endorsed by our congressional and state representatives, all of the Tri-Valley mayors, District Attorney Nancy O'Malley, and dozens of other community leaders. As your mayor, public safety has always been my top priority. The city's sound economic policies ensure that our city finances and our infrastructure will continue to sustain our future generations. Thank you. Um, next question, um, and again, we'll, we'll allow 90 seconds on each, because there's a little more time for me than the two of you. Livermore urban growth boundary defines the area where the city can grow. How important is it to support Livermore's urban growth boundary? Alameda County has an urban growth boundary that governs growth in the rural parts of the county. Do you think some changes to the county's Measure D for event centers and larger buildings outside city urban growth boundaries should be approved? Uh, County of Rishon. Okay, thank you. Uh, in 2002, I helped collect the signatures to put uh, uh, the urban growth boundary before the council when it was adopted. In 2005, I ran for the city council to stop the uh, Livermore Valley Trails Party Home Project from coming in, which would have destroyed our urban growth boundary. Uh, I worked with uh, the city of Dublin to create an urban growth boundary when I was the chairman of LAFCO. I created the uh, uh, Planning and Policy Committee, which then allowed the assignment of a sphere of influence to open space areas to allow for the protection of open space. Uh, so I'm a longtime advocate and protector for the urban growth boundary. Uh, that was put in by, uh, by the voters that, that worked very hard to put that uh, uh, initiative together, uh, and I don't think it should, be, it should be changed without consulting the voters as well. Thank you. Okay. Well, short answer, yes and yes. I absolutely support the boundary, and I also support the Measure D that also uh, limits uh, Alameda County from building homes as well. Uh, what this, what the boundary allows us to do is focus on the inside of Livermore and, and focus on our streets, our businesses, our plazas, uh, all the amenities that we have. And uh, we get to, we have the opportunity to either build something or beautify something. And I'm all about the open space. I grew up Western and uh, you know, it, it, it broke my heart to, to go to war and come back and see a whole new downtown, but now I love the downtown. It's awesome to hang out there, and uh, a lot of Livermore citizens uh, love it as well as as well as they love the um, the, the rolling hills, especially during the winter time. Um, if somebody tries to attack it, I would absolutely defend it, and I would uh, raise uh, my own political action committee to uh, defend it and and uh, talk to the people and educate the people in uh, land management okay. and beautification. Thank you. Uh, this next question is a little bit of a hybrid, but uh, let's see what you can do with this issue. Um, to increase off-road vehicle use, some want to see the Carnegie State vehicle, uh, Vehicular Recreation Area expanded into the neighboring Tesla Park. Others want to preserve the natural environment and history of Tesla Park. Um, the city of 
Livermore is, of course, next to the, these areas, though they're outside the city limits. Uh, the city council can certainly have a voice in trying to influence the determination of what happens. So the questions are, what do you want to see happen with the Tesla Park area? And as the council, or a mayor in this case, what would you do to try to achieve your vision for the Tesla Park property? And uh, Candy Lane, we'll start with you. So, fortunately, I grew up riding dirt bikes and three-wheelers, so I love the Tesla Park. As far as jurisdiction, though, legally, we do have an issue because it is outside of uh, the city limits. Um, but I am an advocate for um, recreational park and fun. Uh, it definitely teaches our youth how to be um, environmentally conscious as well as it teaches them how to drive and, and so many other things. I grew up riding a KTM 500, a 92. Uh, it was awesome. I drove off all the cliffs <laughs> at, at Carnegie. So, um, you know, and that's one small little area. Uh, compared to the rest of California and the states where people have the right to pursue happiness. They, a lot of people that ride cannot afford, you know, to go buy a thousand acres and ride on their own land. So we have this wonderful area that does take care of and cordons off areas for animals or certain habitats. Um, but I think it's a, a wonderful park and I'm a supporter of it. Candidate Marshawn, please. So this came to the council. I actually signed the letter from the Livermore City Council uh, to support the uh, expansion for the, the wilderness uh, into the Carnegie area. Now the, uh, uh, or actually into the Tesla Park. Carnegie Park is actually the off-road park. Uh, the uh, moving into Tesla, and the curious thing of it was, is the original letter sent by LARPD encourage the expansion of Carnegie Park with its current use. So the original one was actually supporting the expansion of the off-road facility. Nobody actually read the letter. The letter that the city council sent was actually to support the wildlife corridor, which is critically important going through that area. There's a, some fascinating work done by UC Berkeley uh, talking about how important that, that wildlife corridor is and the need to uh, expand the Tesla Park wilderness region uh, and when you look at the aerial photographs of the devastation that was created by the off-road motorcycles uh, you really see the uh, the need for good management it was very poorly managed and I think that since they haven't been able to manage it we need to take that over I know that the state I've been working with uh, Catherine Baker about how the state can sell that property to allow Carnegie Park to be, to have Tesla Park, the wildlife corridor expanded into Carnegie and have open space and wildlife uses rather than off-road uses. Okay, thank you. The, the next um, question is actually in three parts and um, I think the first part we can probably stick to the idea of 30 seconds and then maybe the second third parts we can go on to the 90 seconds. So this concerns the Livermore Downtown Center, which will define the Livermore community for years to come. We're going to delve into some of the specifics. So the first question is a yes or no if possible, short comment perhaps. Citizens have said that they want to see the center of Livermore's downtown celebrate our surrounding open space. Do you support Stockman's Park, which provides a half acre of public green space? Please answer yes or no if possible. I'll uh, start with you, uh, candidate Marshawn. Uh, I absolutely support uh, Stockman's Park. The total area is about three and a half acres of open space. Uh, for the park area. So it's maybe a half acre of lawn, but it's three and a half acres of open space. But I absolutely support the community's vision uh, for Stockman's Park. Okay, thank you. Kennedy Lane. Uh, yes, I am in agreement with it. There's not a whole lot about the uh, downtown that I would change. Uh, the the city, current city council had 
uh, gone out, got the votes, talked to the people, and uh, made stuff happen to move that plan forward. So uh, I think the uh, Stockman's uh, Rodeo Board uh, is, is also grateful and thankful. I'm happy to see them finally get what they want because it is long overdue, uh, especially to honor our veterans. And I mean, I am a major advocate for our veterans. So. Uh, that's really cool. You know, I saw the statue uh, that's going to go in there, and I would have loved to see him carry an M16, though, or a bazooka or something. That okay. <laughs> Let me ask the next part. When you, when you like to expand on things, so you'll have an opportunity. Um, the other segment of green space in the downtown plan runs through the property allocated to 130 units of private workforce housing. Housing that will be available to those with income levels up to 100%. 120% of median income for Alameda County. The schedule of performance gives the developer almost eight years to negotiate with the city and complete the project. Should this green space be located in between private housing, or should the city take the time to find a way to move a substantial number of the residential units off-site to allow for a bigger, more public park? Um, Candidate Lane, I'll give you 90 seconds. Oh, thank you. Um, you know, I have grave concerns about the residential housing that's going downtown. I personally, personally am not for it. I believe downtown is for businesses. I believe it's for beautification and, uh, and parks. Uh, we want people to bring their children out. And, and this is an opportunity where neighbors get to know neighbors and people in their community. Um, I believe that the housing should be put somewhere else and uh, the city did not give the people of Livermore an opportunity to vote on that. They just said, hey, we got this $14 million contract with the state that we have to put this in there. Well, doing contract law for six years, I know for a fact, words can change on a piece of paper. So the housing can move and we can renegotiate with the state what to do with the $14 million. I really don't see it's a big deal because it's still a win-win for the state. They're still going to collect taxes off of these, this development either way. So uh, I would be if houses go down there, I'm concerned that we will not be giving the workforce people the opportunity to move into these homes. So somehow, somewhere down the line, somebody's going to be screening these people, and I don't believe that it's gonna be fair for the workforce people. So I would uh, look into uh, making sure that it's our teachers or police officers or whoever that is, is moving into these homes. We talk about it, but we sometimes do different things also. Thank you. Kennedy Marshawn. Okay, a little bit of history. Uh, the uh, reason that that land was purchased with $14 million of affordable housing funds is because originally the Friends of Livermore supported a 10-story, 2,000-seat regional theater that was going to have 420 housing units on that site. Uh, Friends of Livermore was an advocate supporter of that as they supported BART coming into the downtown. So the city of Livermore purchased that land with affordable housing funds. Well, the uh, the uh, uh, redevelopment agency went away, so did the 10-story, uh, the 2,000-seat regional theater. Uh, now there's a big push for a 299-seat theater uh, to take its place. Uh, however, there was 420 units originally proposed for that site, supported by the Friends of Livermore. Now, $14 million. We now have a wonderful plan that we traded some of that housing off-site with the Stockman's Association. That takes away part of the requirement. There's still 84 units required by the state, and there's another units, number of units required because the, uh, uh, that was the affordable housing fund. That was the site chosen for the affordable housing. Now, there are still opportunities to move that housing around to accommodate a larger area of open space, uh, but uh, um, the deep restrictions on that land for affordability on the housing is for 55 years. The city's been very good about maintaining affordable housing, and affordable housing is, is $80,000 a year of household income. So the third part of uh, the downtown question, and I think this one we can limit to 60 seconds, what is your assessment of the proposed East Side Hotel in terms of its architecture? 
its height, and the food and conference services that it will provide. Uh, candidate Marshawn. Well, uh, we heard from the community that the hotel needed to have an iconic presence on South Livermore Avenue. They also wanted to preserve the uh, downtown character and Blacksmith Square. The location of the hotel was uh, priority number seven. Protection of Blacksmith Square was number two. The only way to meet the competing priorities was to put the hotel on the east side. Uh, you're still, uh, uh, the four-story hotel allows for a road that goes around it. It adds for, uh, allows for increased ADA parking, which is very important for the community. Uh, the uh, uh, hotel, originally there was talk of having a, uh, an upscale restaurant in there. Uh, however, it's uh, closer examination. There are a lot of restaurants around it, and there's some consideration that they didn't want the hotel to be competing with the restaurants immediately around it. So uh, this would be a very good compromise. And I think it's uh, an opportunity to be very, very successful. Okay, thank you. Uh, Ken Amy. I like where the hotel is positioned. I like the exit and entrance uh, avenues. Um, as far as the architecture, though, of it, I don't see that it resembles any history or Western appeal of what Livermore is. Um, I really don't even want to open the, the can of worms to change anything. I just want to get it built and let people start enjoying it because we've been fighting over it for too long already. And quite frankly, I want to talk about real issues. We have a huge problem in rising crime. We got a big problem with BART getting away with $455 million of our tax money. Uh, we also got a problem with PG&E trying to raise utility rates and pay for their lawsuits for all the houses they burned down up north. So there's bigger issues that we need to talk about than the the, the golden trim on the hotel, uh, in my opinion. You know. <laughs> okay, and you know I misrepresented. We've got a couple more questions on this uh, the, the downtown program. Uh, so you'll have an opportunity to address some of the things you may not have skipped and going off on your, uh, your, your big concerns. Um, the city is heavily involved in the funding of the Eastside Hotel's paid public underground parking. This paid parking consists of 100 long-term stores, stalls of 24-hour parking, 20 short-term stalls, 4-hour parking. Next to the hotel, the city will be funding 21 public surface parking stalls, 12 for the disabled, where now there are only three. Some say this will increase parking for the public. Others say it will primarily serve hotel guests and take parking away from the public in the area where it is needed most. What do you think? 60 seconds, Siege, uh, candidate lane. Okay, so um, clearly I don't think there's enough ADA parking downtown, uh, especially with the new buildings being built. Uh, we can always use more parking go another level. Um, one concern that I had that actually council member candidate Brent Seiler bring up is who's paying for this, this parking garage. I haven't had time to look into that recently, but uh, that's, that's an issue if the developer of the hotel is not going to build the parking garage that in my opinion should already be just for the hotel people because where are the hotel customers going to park? Where are they going to stay? If that garage underneath the hotel is already filled up because it's the closest garage to downtown, all the other hotel customers are going to have to park elsewhere at the other parking garages that are eventually going to be built. So there's some issues to be addressed there. Um, again, I'm not really going to change much because I want to get it built, get it going. If we need to spray paint a blue box on another stall, then we'll do that to make more ADA. Candidate Marshawn. Well, just to address really quickly, uh, Candidate Lane said that the crime is rising in Livermore. The true fact of the matter is uh, homicide is down, robbery is down 24%, uh, residential burglaries are down almost 50%, larceny is down, vehicle theft is down, and arson is down. So that is flat out incorrect. Crime is not rising, crime is going down. Uh, however, as far as the parking goes, uh, yes, the city is splitting the cost of the, uh, the parking garage, we're paying a fraction of that, because the number one priority in the downtown was, in fact, parking. And uh, 
the, uh, uh, we have increased the amount of ADA parking. It's multiples of what's actually required. And the amount of parking is a negotiable split as far as what's going to be short-term, what's going to be long-term. And to be honest, uh, the last eight years of conferences that I've gone to, everyone that I go to the conference with, nobody rents a car. We all take Uber, we all take shuttles. We don't park, we don't bring cars to hotels anymore because it's just not worth the effort. And the fifth part, and let's, let's, I think we can cover this in 60 seconds. Overall, do you believe that the council's downtown plan is good for the community, or do you think it should be improved? Do you think voters should have the opportunity to vote on the city's proposed downtown development through the referendum process? Uh, candidate Marshall? Well, the interesting thing about this is when uh, Friends of Livermore wanted the 10-story uh, theater part in the downtown and the 420 housing units, they did not want it to go to a vote because they said the city council was elected to represent the people. Uh, and now we're hearing that there's a referendum out there, almost a quarter of a million dollars to fund this referendum. Uh, absolutely, it's a First Amendment right, and I will defend that. The people have the right to, uh, uh, to have their say on this. Uh, we heard from many, many people. The community came together to create the downtown plan. It's a very exciting plan, and I continue to support that. But uh, uh, we heard the priorities, we heard the community, uh, and in order to meet the competing priorities, groups that had come, never would have come together, the Stockman's Association, the uh, Wine Growers Association, the Downtown Inc. Incorporated, all these groups came together to create this plan. That's what makes it so exciting. Right. Okay, Lane, same question, you need it again, or you got it? I believe that the people who wanted to come out to vote and give their opinion did. Unfortunately, it was only approximately around 2,000 people who wanted to come out, give or take. But I, I don't think that the city did enough to get out to the families who are hardworking, who are very tired when they come home on a daily basis and want to just spend time with their kids. They're too tired to go to all these city meetings and, and look at these pictures and pick something. So 2,000 people, getting out to approximately 2,000 people is not enough. Uh, we should have more, but we're out of time. We need to move forward with these plans. Uh, also, going back to the crime report, Mayor Marchand failed to tell the people that he was reading a 2017 report. Uh, I talk to police officers on a weekly basis from Pleasanton PD and Livermore PD, and crime is on the rise. Thank God it's not near as bad as Fremont or Newark or Oakland but we have a lot of problems because of certain areas in the city of Livermore, and that needs attention. The handcuffs need to be taken off of our police officers so they can do their job. All right, thank you. Uh, next question, uh, 60 seconds to answer. Homelessness is a problem in Livermore. What solutions would you pursue as mayor? Kevin Lane? <clears throat> There's a, a couple of solutions I have, uh, and I kind of piggybacked off of a candidate, uh, uh, Brent Seiler, and we both agreed that we would work with uh, any of the business owners that have uh, warehouses available, that we would uh, round up the homeless and, and invite them to stay inside these warehouses and provide some sort of amenities. And we figure out who can we hire out of these homeless people to bring in some income for them. Um, we can also uh, provide more programs or get these people introduced to programs and rehabilitation to take care of these people. Uh, it, it, that's not okay, even though they have the right, that they want to live out in a bush uh, or, or under a, a pillar of some sort. We need to take care of the people in our community. Now, I'm not talking about spending millions of dollars on this. I'm talking about, hey, how do we get these people on their feet? And in my innovative resolutions, which is the packet right outside on the table, it talks about how to help the homeless and many other ideas to bring in money for the homeless. Okay, next. Um, okay. Well, as mayor, I convened the first summit on regional homelessness, which was attended by over 200 participants. Vice Mayor Werner and I initiated the first Livermore survey on homelessness. 
we learned that over 40% of our local homeless population have family in Livermore. City government will not be able to uh, uh, solve homelessness if families can't solve it. We found homeless individuals who will not accept offers to come off the street, and many who suffer from mental illness or substance abuse. We learned that over 90% of homeless veterans do not receive the benefits to which they are entitled. So we have focused on partnerships to connect veterans with their benefits providers. Simply offering part-time job ignores the fact that many of the homeless are working. They do not earn enough to afford housing. The city hired a homelessness czar to coordinate regional resources. The city is building affordable housing for seniors and veterans and contracting with service providers for wraparound services to ensure long-term success. This is a short answer question, 30 seconds. Do you support or oppose Measure U, the Livermore Affordable Health Care Initiative? Candidate Mershon? I absolutely oppose Measure U. It's going to cost the city $2 million a year to stand up a whole new bureaucracy. Good short answer. <laughs> Keep it short. Can't I do that. that. <laughs> I do not support Measure U. Okay, thank you. Uh, so, I served on the uh, Tri-Valley Conservancy, and, and our main charge on the Conservancy was uh, to oversee the lands being preserved by the South Livermore Valley Area Plan. That plan was developed in the early 1990s and uh, basically promulgated in its current form in 1993. So, here we are in 2018. 25 year anniversary of the plan. And there has been some discussion, at least within the Tri Valley Conservancy's uh, inner circles, that it's time to revisit the plan. Part of the reason being that maybe it's not working so well for the number one objective of preserving viticulture in South Livermore. So I'd like each of you to take um, 60 seconds to tell us your views about sitting down again with the county, city of Pleasanton, maybe some other uh, interested parties, friends of the vineyards, uh, friends of Livermore might want to participate, uh, Wine Growers Association, and take a second look at, at that plan. Um, go ahead, Candy Lane. I am all ears and would love to hear each organization's thoughts on preserving the land, possibly increasing some agriculture or cattle ranches or just keeping it how it is. Uh, I'm happy to sit down and talk with Alameda County as well to keep Measure D in place to uh, prevent more buildings and houses. Look, we have only so much space here, only so many people can live here, and there's a lot of people rotating in and out. So I don't think we need to be focused on building more buildings or homes. I would love to sit down and, with these organizations and discuss, do we actually need change? Can't we just leave the land like it is? You know, I grew up Western. Uh, I'd love to see horses roam, running around out there or bring in some llama ranches or something. I don't know, you know, I'm open to it, but I'm adamant about keeping the land open. Thank you. Uh, Kevin Marchand, do you have any comments? Sure. Um, this was a tremendous award-winning effort to make this happen. It was extremely complicated. Complicated. Almost didn't happen a couple of times. Uh, and I certainly commend the uh, Tribal Life Conservancy for the tremendous work that they've done. Uh, that said, uh, we never quite reached the critical mass that was expected and was hoped for to ensure the long-term viability of the vineyards. So we haven't really reach that, uh, that magic number to ensure the long-term sustainability of the vineyards. Uh, those vineyard lands that we do have are preserved in perpetuity, and I think that's absolutely critical. Uh, one of the things about opening this thing up again that I find uh, uh, very concerning is once you open something up, where do you stop? And uh, I think that uh, if this is opened up, we need to be very careful and have very strong protections in place that we don't lose control 
of the South Blackmore Valley Area Plan. I met with a gentleman from Swan, Australia, who looked the world over to find a place that had solved the problem to protect their, their viticulture areas. He looked the world over and he came to Livermore because Livermore solved it. Thank you. Um, I think we should allow a couple minutes for the next series of questions. And I'll do my best to phrase them. We've kind of been on the fly tonight because we didn't have as so much participation as we had. So the questions are as follows. One, are we building too much housing or the right amount of housing? Two, how would you address the imbalance in jobs and housing in the Bay Area? And the third part of the question is, what is your vision for the long-term term solutions and approaches to the regional housing and traffic issues that we confront on a daily basis? Um, we'll start with your, our candidate, Marshawn, please. Wow. Yeah. Uh, you have a full two minutes. Well, Livermore has a one-to-one -one jobs housing balance. We've been very careful about that. Uh, cities like Palo Alto, Emeryville, have anywhere from a four to six to one jobs housing imbalance. Uh, so we can't control cities like Palo Alto. Uh, and in fact, uh, measure 29-23 actually exempts the three cities that are the greatest contributors to the huge commutes and the rise in property values that we are experiencing today. There really need to be uh, some, some regional solutions. Uh, how do you, uh, San Francisco and Santa Clara counties created a half million jobs over the last seven years. They created 60,000 housing units. That's what's driving up the cost of the, ho of the housing going all the way out to Stockton. Uh, and that's something that's certainly beyond the city of Livermore's control. What we do have control of is that we have, we're bringing in manufacturing jobs, we're bringing in high paying jobs, uh, and we're bringing in some housing. We're our one-to-one -one jobs housing balance. So we have people coming into the laboratory, 37% of the jobs being offered at the lab are turned down because people can't afford to live here. Uh, so this is a huge issue. One of the things I'm on right now is I'm on the AB 758 committee and we're working to bring in uh, a rail transit to go from the San Joaquin Valley ultimately to connect to BART, connecting ACE to BART, uh, because we need to move people through this corridor. Uh, jobs housing balance is much bigger than Livermore can deal with. Uh, we have already committed that we will not grow uh, beyond our infrastructure. Originally, the city of Livermore was talking about going to 105,000 people if BART came in. Uh, if not, we're not going to grow that far. We're growing from within. We're not going to do sprawl development anymore. Uh, so we have to be very judicious about the, uh, uh, the in, uh, in growth that we do. Candidate Lane, what are your comments on the questions? Thank you. First off, we need to take a look at our infrastructure. Can we really build more houses? When you look back at the general plan, back when the recession hit, we were supposed we would have slow growth on building homes, and it was stagnated over a long period of time. Candidate Lane, what are your comments on the questions? Thank you. First off, we need to take a look at our infrastructure. Can we really build more houses? When you look back at the general plan, Back when the recession hit, we were supposed we would have slow growth on building homes, and it was stagnated over a long period of time. But because of the recession, we had to postpone some of those homes. So now we're caught up, and we're making money, and houses are being are popping up everywhere. So we need to revisit the general plan, and we need to match it up with the times, especially with the downtown plan, because there's so many changes now with the downtown plan. And fortunately, we do have a game plan in my opinion, a good game plan to move the downtown forward. But we do not have enough parking, and a lot of roads are being repaved without quality, which means we're repaving, we're wasting money on repaving roads that don't even need to be repaved. There's a lot of neighborhoods that I go driving around all the time seeing all over the place that need to be repaved, uh, especially with uh, trees that are rooting up sidewalks 
We need to secure our uh, infrastructure before we build any more housing and look at the plans to match the housing growth with the current times right now. Um, as far as public transportation goes, I, like I said before, I'm all about public transportation. However, I do not want BART out here right now because it's not safe. It brings crime, it brings unkemptness, it brings a whole lot of problems. We have too many incompetent people running BART right now. And the governments are not doing their job to square BART away to, to bring proper transportation out here. You know, we just built this express lane, which was unconstitutional on 580. It should have remained the, the diamond lane. The government had no business turning it into a lane where they could charge money. So, eventually, when we can get public transportation together, then uh, I'm all for having the, the rails connect. So we're at a point where we, um, I'm going to allow you to make your closing statements. Um, and we have enough time, I think, for two minutes each. Is that all right? So, 90 seconds? Okay, very good. Um, and we'll start with, um, who do we start with in the opening? We'll start with candidate uh, Marshawn for the close. <laughs> okay, uh, just to correct the uh, was made. Yes, of course I read from the 2017 crime report because we haven't yet produced the 2018 report. That is the most recent data that we do have. So in closing, um, under my leadership as mayor, things are getting done. Our beloved train depot has now been moved back to the railroad tracks. It has been lovingly restored to its original glory and will once again serve as a train station. During an extensive downtown outreach process, the council listened carefully to the residents' priorities. We will complete the community's vision for the downtown with more parking, more open space, Stockman's Park, where people can gather and children can play, keeping the promise that was made over 50 years ago. We will be adding a science center and a hotel while preserving Blacksmith Square and our town downtown character. For my final term, some of my goals are to complete Livermorium Plaza, celebrating the relationship between the laboratories, our city, and the world. To cut the ribbon on our new emergency operations center, and with the implementation of the asset management plan, to ensure that our infrastructure continues to meet the needs of our community for generations and to keep the city on sound financial footing. We are working to find ways to create more housing for seniors, veterans, and teachers, so that they can continue to live in our community. To keep living more a great place to live, vote Marshawn for mayor. Thank you. Thank you. Can I please? Thank you. I'm going to stand for this one since I'm last. Folks, I'm a businessman. My background is business and law and the military. You know, I didn't go overseas to get shot and blown up and come back home and see my fellow Americans suffer and be oppressed and uh, see my fellow Livermoreans. They're paying bills and then they can't pour food on the plate. These new families that are coming to, to town can't even get their children into schools. And they're spending all their money on childcare. We need to focus on our families first. We need to focus on the people first. There's not a whole lot that I disagree with with our Mayor Barshawn and, and the City Council. I think we're on a great path. I mean, we're doing a lot better than many other areas in California. But you know, Working in the federal government, I can stand being a businessman, I can see so many holes. And there's so many uh, cover-ups on so many other issues that I know I can do better. So as the Livermore Mayor, I bring youth, innovation, and drive. I get things done because that's what I, I do. So vote for Joshua Lane for Livermore Mayor, better quality of living. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you, candidates. And I'm